today I want to go to the very basics of what LabKey can do and how to approach it, how to get your head around it and start making it useful to you. So um, I have a little PowerPoint here to, to guide us through into the very, um, very first steps of approaching LabKey. So here's my agenda for today. I want to just give a quick picture of um, who we are, uh, what the company, uh, what LabKey software is as a company, uh, and then I want to ask the really fundamental questions. What is LabKey Server? What does it do? And how do, how do you get started with it? I do want, I'm hoping at the end I can do a little demo and build a tiny little file sharing application to give you a sense of what it's like to actually work with the server. So just a brief history of LabKey Software as a company. We um, started in 2003 as a part of the uh, Seattle institution called the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, and, uh, or sometimes just shortened to Fred Hutch. And uh, we were three employees who were really in spare office space inside Fred Hutch. And um, we would essentially uh, had open door policy and scientists would come by and bring us their data problems and we'd try to fix them. And we just really were sort of um, doing one-off problem solving, one at a time, for many years. Um, in 2005, we became a, a standalone company, although we still were inside the actual Fred Hutch buildings. Um, by 2011, again, we were continuing to do bespoke apps or custom apps for the scientists at Fred Hutch, but we noticed that the core functionality, we kept on seeing the same use cases over and over again. And this bundle of software started to emerge, which we realized was really a software platform, something that could be generally useful to scientists and researchers. And um, so we uh, gave it the name LabKey uh, Server. And um, this really became a, uh, an enormous toolkit uh, that anybody could use. Uh, at that point, we were just 12 employees, and fast forward six more years to today, I believe we're 48 employees now, almost 50. Um, we're engaged in a great variety of projects, big and small, um, and uh, right now we've got 2,500 users, um, and uh, 220 organizations are, are using LabKey Server. Uh, just to give you a sense of our clients, um, a lot of our clients are just small academic labs. You know, three people maybe in, in such a lab who have don't have enormous amounts of data, but they have potential. They have complicated data, and they need help putting it together. We also have some much bigger clients, large academic uh, researchers who are in a network or a lab consortium. We also do um, a lot of work for clinical providers and clinical researchers, people like epidemiologists, oncologists, geneticists, and so on. Um, we also do some work in the pharmacological industry for uh, big pharma, if you like, and drug researchers. And we also do uh, a lot of work for primate research centers uh, in the U.S. and others. That's not a complete list. Um, we have a lot of projects, and here's just a, a few selected um, applications that uh, we, we currently are supporting or have worked on in the past. Uh, LabKey Biologics uh, is an 
is an application that will debut in March of this year, and it provides researchers who are attempting drug discovery to get a hold on their production pipeline uh, for uh, pharmacologicals. Um, Genomics England is a, a, a group in the UK that has started a project called the 100,000 Genomes Project. They're trying to sequence 100,000 patients, uh, human participants, and uh, they want to build a very large application around that data that provides clinical views of uh, the data and also views for researchers of the data. Uh, and also it involves a lot of uh, de-identification work and security work around that data, obviously. Uh, Panorama is a uh, proteomics tool uh, that we're currently working on. Um, Argos is uh, an oncological um, database that allows uh, researchers to um, discover new hypotheses and, and visualize uh, clinical histories and on, uh, onco oncology data. Uh, HiCore IQ um, is a project we've worked on in the past that actually attempts to um, find uh, cost-saving measures in four cancer patients who often um, find themselves bankrupt uh, with a cancer diagnosis, and um, uh, that's a very exciting and novel project. Um, and that's just a few of them. Um, there are more than I can list, uh, and we also do a lot of work just doing consulting for, uh, uh, for researchers who need to find a way through their data problems. Um, what's common to all of these efforts and all of these projects is LabKey Server, which is the core of it all. It's the seedbed or the, um, uh, the factory from which all of these products and projects emerge. And that's really what I want to talk about today is the core, the LabKey server itself. Uh, oh, by the way, just to step back, if you want to know more about these particular projects, um, you can look on labkey.com and Kelsey has written up uh, uh, nice profiles for each of these, uh, each of these projects. So, what is LabKey Server? What is it? Well, the official blurb is LabKey Server is an open source software platform that helps biomedical researchers integrate, analyze, and share data. It's a very compressed blurb. Uh, it's so compressed it doesn't really mean anything, right, just in itself, and I really want to unpack this incredibly compressed sentence and give you a sense of, a more vivid sense of what the server really is and what it does. So the server really is an incredibly feature-rich landscape um, and, and tool set. And when I attempt to summarize it, I I think you really end up with three main feature areas. The first feature area we'll call the data repository side, the data, the data repository facet of LabKey Server. This is the part of the, the side of the server which brings data together. That might be data that's in different systems, different independent data systems, uh, or, and it might be data that has different shapes, different morphologies, data that was never really intended to, to reside together or data that was never really intended to know about each other. Uh, LabKey Server is really good at bringing data like that together, turning it into one big ball that you can analyze together. The second facet of LabKey Server I'll call the data showcase side of the server. This is that facet of the server which presents or highlights data. It's also 
the part of the server which forms a collaboration environment around data. Uh, and this can be a very narrow collaboration environment just for you and your selected colleagues, for instance, or just you and your small lab. Or it might be a very large collaboration environment. It might be broadcasting your data to the whole world uh, or just a slice of your data to the whole world. Uh, and this is also the side of the server which creates relationships between some packet of data and some audience, again, whether it's a small selected audience or a huge audience. Uh, and the third side of the server is really the, the, if you like, the funnest side of the server, the most dynamic side of the server. This, this is what I'll call this the electronic laboratory side of the server. This is about analyzing data, interrogating data, um, and it's much like a wet lab or a, 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 a real physical lab in the real world, it analyzes materials and physical systems. LabKey does the very same thing, but it does it in the electronic world, in the data world. And this side of the server is also about crafting reports, creating visualizations, uh, com confirming some hypothesis or disconfirming some hypothesis. Uh, in short, it's about insight. Um, LabKey server is also a platform, and that is different from a product. Um, a platform is really just a toolkit. It's a, it's like a, a car parts store, uh, as opposed to a product, which is like a particular car. Um, a platform really has no fixed use cases. It's just an open field of potentiality. And, and for that reason, some kind, sometimes LabKey can be a little bit intimidating. You, you install it, you, you start it up, and it doesn't really necessarily look like that much. It looks like uh, just a bunch of tools. And you really need to put the tools together to make it do something, to make it go. Um, here is a graphical version of uh, the three facets of the server. On the, the left side, the orange column there is the data inbound side of the server. This is the, the, this is the server pulling in data like an octopus from all of these different sources. It might be clinical data, it might be out of a limb system, it might be sequence data, it could be you know, anything. Uh, on the right-hand side, the green column there, that is the outbound side of the server. This is the part of the server with broadcast data to scientists, to other collaborators. And in the middle, in the server itself, is the, the workshop, the, um, the electronic laboratory itself, where you transform data, join data. It's sort of like a taffy pull of data. You're, you want to stretch it and pull it and put different parts of it together in different ways. Again, LabKey, just to reiterate, it's, LabKey is a platform, and uh, it doesn't really do anything uh, on its own. It doesn't do anything until you um, start to put the pieces together and actualize the giant field of potentiality, which is really what the server is. Uh, it's a working with LabKey server is really uh, about building your own software. And, um, and we'll, the rest of this presentation is really to give you a sense of what that's like and, and how to start doing it. So like, what, what can you do with Blackkey Server? Some, um, really, you can do anything with it. Um, it's really quite broad in general. But here are a couple of ideas or um, uh, so some use cases to get to get you a more vivid sense of, of what's capable of. Uh, one thing people do with Lackey Server is they escape from Excel. Uh, scientists often have lots of Excel files, and Excel is a wonderful tool. It does a lot of things, but it also doesn't do a lot of things. It's hard to, for instance, query Excel, and it's also 
not always obvious how to join different Excel files together into something useful and scalable. Uh, the traditional way out of the, the Excel limitations is to upgrade to a database, and LabKey is all about that. Um, and uh, it's a there's lots of great tools for converting your Excel data into database data, where you can do all of the magic of, of SQL queries like uh, uh, filtering and joining and whatnot. Also, uh, LabKey is uh, very good at capturing data out of your external systems, out of your existing systems. Maybe it's a LIM system, or maybe it's an electronic data capture system like REDCap. Um, LabKey has ways to directly import data out of those systems, and and there's a a basic philosophy underlying all of this kind of data capture work in the server. We um, we don't consider LabKey um, something that is is supposed to come in and disrupt your current systems. It's really something that's supposed to enhance your current systems and leave them in place. So when I say capture data from an external system, I really mean synchronize with data from another system, but leave that system in place. Uh, perhaps, your, perhaps you like your LIM system and you don't really want to replace it, but maybe that LIM, LIM system has certain limitations. It, it doesn't really have a way to, for instance, link to participant data, or maybe it doesn't have a way to link to downstream assay data. Well, LabKey's good at that. So, um, so often people will just use LabKey as an enhancement to what they've already got in place in the lab. Um, another set of use cases uh, are around putting data on the web. Some people just want to be able to work with uh, their data through a web portal. Um, it makes it, a, it's a really natural way to uh, collaborate around data where everyone can see the same data through their browsers. Um, and um, again, that can be with, you can just do that within your own lab or do it with the whole world. Um, this also, people want to be able to secure their data when it's on the web. And LabKey has lots of features around keeping eyes off of data. And this is also connected with uh, another side of the feature we haven't talked, another side of the server we haven't talked about, the compliance side of the feature. They, these are uh, features that we're building right now. Uh, we're really spending 2017 uh, putting our efforts into building out our compliance type features um, and ways to also ways to de-identify data uh, and uh, and related type of functionality. Also, I should say people use LabKey Server to build entire applications around their data, so that. Um, people can edit or update um, their data online and create a real user experience um, for, for their audience around their data and, and really make their data talk to them. Um, and the, another set of use cases are around joining uh, heterogeneous data sets. Um, this is especially useful for, for people that are conducting clinical trials or clinical studies or cohort studies. Uh, such researchers will uh, develop a whole set of different data sets, clinical data sets, demographic data sets. They'll have experimental and assay data. They'll have specimen repository data out of perhaps in a limb system, uh, and they need a way to bring all that data together into one 
chunk uh, into one big cube that they can slice and dice and look at in different ways. Uh, LabKey is very strong in that respect. And as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, LabKey is also good at joining data out of external lab systems like uh, Freezer Pro, RedCap, R, different database implementations. Um, LabKey is also very strong at building reports and focus reports uh, out of raw data. Uh, and also it's another, another real strong point of the server is managing large amounts of data. For instance, the 100,000 Genomes project is an enormous pile of data. Uh, and LabKey is really quite fast and efficient in uh, working with it. Uh, and ultimately, though, these are really just suggested use cases or possible use cases. Really, the, the platform, the server, is very broad and flexible, and the use cases are ultimately unlimited. Um, it's really only uh, limited by uh, your imagination, essentially. Um, I wanted to actually show you a working application that's built on top of LabKey Server, and I thought an excellent choice would be the Zika Open Research Portal. This is a application that was built by a client, uh, Dave O'Connor, at the uh, O'Connor Lab in Wisconsin. Uh, I don't think he built it himself. He built it with his people in the lab. But they built it all by themselves. They didn't really uh, use any of the expertise here in the Seattle office or in, down in the San Diego office. They really built it all by themselves. It's a great DIY project. Um, the point of their Zika portal is to uh, study the Zika virus in a primate model. And they also, the, Dave O'Connor is really somebody who believes in data transparency. He really wants to show as much of his data as he can and um, to the public in real time. And that's just what this portal does. As they bring in data from uh, their different experiments on primates, they post it as fast as they can. And, it, and, it, and uh, it updates all of their visualizations and reports in real time. Um, their portal really does show some of the key features of the server. For instance, it allows for user manipulation of the data. Even as just a casual user who approaches the Zika portal, I'm able to create my own visualizations, filter and sort, and even join data in novel ways uh, that Dave O'Connor perhaps hasn't even considered. Uh, I can also export the data on demand if I want to work on it in my own tools or on my own terms. And I just thought I would show it to you. Just, we'll just kind of browse around and, and look at it because it's such an exciting uh, use of LabKey. If you want to just browse yourself, you, it's just a simple URL, zika.labkey.com. And uh, here is the home page. He, uh, explains what he's doing here. It's, uh, it's, uh, he says, you know, Zika virus is a public health emergency and I want to study it and, and make the data available fast and in real time. Uh, if we drill into this a little bit, we can see he has divided up the work uh, into these different experimental regions. For instance, um, the, here he has challenged some primates with uh, the Asian lineage of the Zika virus. And he's also got another set of studies where he's challenged the uh, primates with the African lineage. And let's just drill into some of these. Let's look at the Asian lineage work. Uh, here he, it looks like he is uh, challenging three rhesus macaques with the French Polynesian Zika virus, and he has a little explanation of his study objectives here. 
and a little more detail on the actual primates he's working with. Um, let's just drill into these primates a bit. He's got three primates in this in this little study here. And uh, notice this view is a kind of a baseball card type view of this primate, whose ID number is 393422. Uh, by the way, I just happen to know this about Dave O'Connor's work. I know that that is actually a randomized ID for this particular primate. The actual ID of the primate is hidden from us. Uh, it's, this, so this is uh, an example of de-identification in, in real time here. Uh, this table down here, I should say, first of all, here is a few of the features of this primate. We know it's a male. We know its date of birth was uh, uh, October 2011, and, uh, and some other details here. This table down here is a portrait of all of the data that's been collected for this particular primate. Uh, he's been, he's showing us here data from uh, 300 plus days of, of examination, and the data has been collected into each of these different tables. Here is a table of the viral loads, and if we want to drill into that, we can even see the details of, uh, of all of the different fields in this table. Um, here is a table about this primate's blood chemistry, and we can see, again, all of the details and fields, uh, cell by cell, of the data collected. Each of these tables probably was an Excel file at some point, but uh, a separated uh, Excel file uh, that, that didn't know about each other until they got into LabKey server where they were all joined together to form these combined views of the data. And there's even another way to slice and dice this data. Let's take a look at some of the, of the visualizations here. Here is um, the most fundamental visualization in LabKey is a data grid. So let's take a look at this data grid here. Oh, that's not the one I wanted. Uh, this one's a little more interesting. Uh, again, this was either a single Excel file or multiple Excel files that were imported into LabKey to form this data grid. Um, again, just to remind you, I'm not a logged in user here. Notice I am not signed in. I am just a casual user who happens to know this URL, zika.labkey.org, and I'm able to surf all around it and look at this data because Dave O'Connor specifically opened it up to me. Uh, I can do all kinds of manipulation on this data, actually. Each piece of this grid allows me to do something different to it. For instance, uh, I'm looking at this column here, test ID. Well, there's lots of different blood tests that have been performed here. I, I want to get a picture of, you know, what, which ones, which ones were, were some of these tests more common than others? Is there some test that's particularly popular? What exactly is being done here? What exactly kind of ex blood experiments are being performed? Well, I can get a little vis visualization on this with this little pie chart. It's going to chunk out all of the different kind of blood tests. Well, I don't, looking at this visualization, I can tell that you know, there's not any real standout favorite style of blood test. He's just doing a whole, a whole rainbow of different blood tests. Uh, similarly, if I am interested in just a particular blood test, I can actually filter this grid down to just this particular blood test, and now 600 rows of data have been filtered down to 
300 rows of data, just the ones I'm interested in. And similarly, if I want to filter this down to just one of these primates, I can filter even further and just get those 10 rows of data that I'm interested in. Notice I can export this on demand. If I want, if this is the, the little slice of data that I'm interested in, I can grab it, bring it down to my own machine as an Excel file, and go from there. There's so much to show here, I, I, I could just go on forever. Uh, let me clear out these filters. And um, let me back up, but let's actually look at some of the visualizations that are built on top of that data. For instance, uh, here is a visualization called the, the blood chemistry charts. Um, this is... Uh, these are time charts of each of one of those blood tests, now done visually, obviously a, a little more vivid than a grid. Um, each of these blood tests is taken from uh, just a few days before the infection challenge, and then, you know, we're, we're at 80 days since, since the infection challenge for each of these. Uh, whatever this test covers, ALB, it looks like something happened right after the, the infection and then died down. Um, also, this also looks potentially like something, something related to the infection, although there might be some noise in there. Um, in any case, a lot of this data actually doesn't, looks a little bit noisy to me. It's not really clear that the infection is responsible for each of these shifts in the graphs, but, uh, but you get the idea of really how open this data is to, to the world. Uh, let's see, let's look down here at these viral loads. These are, these are fairly interesting. Here is the viral load taken from an oral swab. Well, obviously, uh, there was a big peak in viral copies uh, in the saliva, the, which ultimately dies down almost completely by day, day 20. And here is the viral load in the plasma. Uh, a similar pattern, a big peak in viral load, and finally by around day 20, it looks like it's been cleared out. In any case, that is a very large uh, data presentation portal uh, that Dave O'Connor has uh, so kindly put together for us to show us just a, and just a few pieces of lab key server. Again, this is just the clinical data research side of lab key server. There's lots more that uh, is possible. Uh, a similar um, application is something called Trial Share, which is a application put out by the Immune Tolerance Network, or ITN for short. Uh, they have similar aims to the Zika portal. Uh, they they are really interested in data transparency, and um, however, th this in many ways their effort is a little bit more demanding because they have uh, human subjects, not not uh, macaque subjects, uh, and they're not working with Zika, the Zika virus specifically, but they have a much broader mandate to work on uh, many immunological issues, uh, like around transplants uh, and around uh, diabetes and etc. cetera. Uh, their data is not live in the way that the Zika portal is, uh, but it is current data, and it's specifically around supporting study publications that they uh, that they have put out. Their study publications will actually link directly to their website, and they've actually done that in in Nature. 
where they've actually included a URL in their paper that links right to their trial share uh, website. And I, I won't bring you through that. Time is short, but please take a look at trial share uh, when you get a moment to get a sense of it. So we've got a sense of what you can do with it, or just a little bit of a sense of what you can do with the server. So how do you actually get started? How do you get into it? Um, I've collected a couple of ways here to get you going. I think the most important thing you can do is actually to install your own server. Um, you can do this really easily on a Windows machine. Um, it's just a one-click installer, and you will get a, um, a server that it won't broadcast to the world. It'll just be on your laptop, uh, but it makes you an administrator of that server, which will really give you the full, rich experience of working with the server and building out your own solutions. Uh, the second most important thing to do is to do the tutorials inside the docs. Um, you'll find that when you install the WebKey server right away, it, it doesn't really tell you what to do. It's, and the reason it doesn't tell you what to do is because there's so much to do. Uh, there really are a hundred different directions to go. It's very hard to say, this is what you're going to do with the server. We don't know what you're going to do with the server. It's, uh, it's so flexible. So in the tutorials, we've really tried to um, teach you ways to um, put the tools together in ways that make sense. Uh, so let's actually take a look at the tutorials page to give you a sense of um, Uh, what these paths, uh, where these paths will lead you. Uh, the first tutorial is just a tour of the grid functionality. The second tutorial is about security, how to um, send out your data to a selected audience or send out your data to the whole world or keep your whole data um, away from the whole world. Uh, the third tutorial is about file sharing, just simply creating a place online where people can grab files or put files. And actually, if we have time, I'll try to just do that tutorial for you just live. It only takes about five minutes. Um, the, uh, there's also a brand new tutorial. I just wrote this a few days ago about building your own LIM system or your own ELN, electronic lab notebook with the server. Um, I invite you to go through that. It's a brand new tutorial. You'll be a little bit of a guinea pig uh, working with it. But um, if you see any problems or you have any suggestions with that tutorial, please uh, email our support boards, which are very active, very responsive. We really uh, value feedback. And it's really our guiding principle in trying to explain the server and get it across to people. Um, one of the most developed areas of the server is the research study features, which we just looked at a minute ago inside the Zika portal. There's a whole set of uh, tutorials around uh, capturing study-related data and joining it together. There's another one of the most developed parts of the server is around assay data or experimental data, sometimes called molecular data. Uh, LabKey can handle really any kind of assay data that's in the form of a table, which I assume is probably probably 98% of all assay-related data. Um, it has lots of power around that, and so naturally there's about a dozen tutorials um, for you to look at and just pick one that you know looks uh, like it's most relevant to you. And then there's a side of the server here which I haven't even touched on. The development side of the server is very rich. It's really a, a great playground for developers. You don't have to be a very good developer to make things happen with LabKey. I'm not a very good developer. Uh, and uh, LabKey really amplifies my powers, what, what little power I have, 
uh, in the development realm. And that's so. Second most important. Second most important thing is to do a tutorial. Uh, another thing to do is use Google. Uh, just Google type lab key plus your question or your concern, and there will probably be a doc topic that will pop up. Um, uh, some other things to do is just learn some basic workflows um, with the server. The most basic workflow is the standard software development workflow, which is uh, basically has four steps or five. Uh, first, identify your need, what do you want. Second, spec out a solution. You know, kind of imagine a solution in your head, or write it down if it's complicated. Third, implement the solution. Just take the tools of the of lab key and try to put it together into something that works. And then fourth, test it, and and uh, then repeat. The fifth step is repeat, and um, and and keep iterating until uh, you're satisfied. Uh, some other basic workflows. Um, I've uh, just written out a couple of possible ways, a couple pathways to uh, build up some software. Uh, the first one I'm going to call the data dashboards workflow. You, you begin this workflow by just, first of all, creating an empty workspace, just an open piece of real estate on the server. Uh, then LabKey comes with lots of pre-built user interface, these panels, or they're called web parts, which you can snap on to that blank field of real estate. Third, you're, you import your data into your dashboard and uh, finally refine it with uh, reports and visualizations and uh, also with uh, refining your navigation with, uh, with uh, the URL uh, field property. I don't have time to explain all this, but it's in the documentation. Uh, a second way to approach the server is really to start with Excel. Um, LabKey is able to examine Excel files and give you a candidate database table based on those Excel files. It's one of the most powerful parts of the server. And um, so you can essentially design a database schema in Excel um, inside uh, the, the Excel table itself. Um, the, the first column, um, I'm sorry, the first row will become the column names of your table. Um, and uh, once you import that into the server, you can then link all the tables together using something called a lookup, um, which essentially, if you know anything about databases, is under the covers really a, a foreign key relationship. Uh, and Without knowing it, you've built yourself a relational database uh, of your data. Uh, another great workflow inside of the server is to work with R reports. LabKey has got lots of features around R. It really uh, has a deep relationship with R. And uh, this is a way to bring your pre any pre-existing R reports that you have into LabKey server and get them onto the web. Basically, you first of all, you need to import your data. Uh, second of all, you might refine that data with SQL queries, but again, that may, you might even just skip that step. Uh, third, bring in your pre-existing R reports into the server. And finally, just hook them up. Uh, LabKey has a way to map columns in your data to your pre-existing R script. And once you've made those mappings, um, you've got a working R script on the web. Another classic way to work with LabP server is with SQL queries. Basically, you import your data. Uh, second, you refine your data with SQL queries. And then third, you're going to layer, layer your reports, whether they're R reports or some other um, type of report on top of those queries. And uh, now you've got live data that updates live on, on the web. 
again, some things to build with the Wacky server, you know, file sharing portals. I'm going to try to build one in three minutes. Uh, data sharing portals, study management tools, uh, assay management tools, LIMS samples, LIMS and sample tracking systems, chimeric combinations of all the above, or, or whatever you can think of. Um, some things to keep in mind while you're working with LabKey. Um, it's very big. LabKey is a big, sprawling platform. There's lots of um, possibility. And, but that also means there really are no dead ends and there really are no irrevocable decisions in the server. Don't be scared of going down a path and um, trying stuff out. You can always walk it back and you can always fix it if you feel like you've broken something. Um, another thing to keep in mind is LabKey's so feature rich, There's, it can probably do what you want it to do. You just haven't found it yet. You just haven't figured it out yet. And um, I'm still finding features inside the server that I didn't know about. And I'm, the, I'm supposed to know about them all. I'm the docs guy. Uh, also, LabKey tends to give you a lot, um, and a lot of times effective software design is about limiting people's choices. So uh, we say less is more. R really good user experience design is about, is about limiting user choice, not expanding it. So a lot of times you'll find when you're working to build an app on top of the server that you'll, you're going to want to cut a link or tone it down a little bit, actually. I've got about five minutes here, so I thought I would actually try to build just a little file sharing app and actually give you this PowerPoint uh, through it. So what I've done, actually, I, I don't think this is everyone on the line, or, there, or maybe there's more people here on the line, but I put your emails into this little list here. And this list is the audience that I want to share some data with or some files with. And with that list, I can really jumpstart this whole process. So I've just gone to our Scratch server. Uh, it's called training-01labkey.com. And this is just a playground to play around with um, the server. And I'm going to start out by taking you all and putting you or putting you into a list. I've into a group, a user group. I'm gonna I've called this user group the um, intro webinar group. And this is how you add people to the server or to a group on the server. You just take their emails, uh, each email on a separate line, paste them in, and they're added to the group. Now, with that, each person on this list should have been sent an email. And if you check your email, you will see your invitation to join this server. And uh, I don't really have anything for you yet. I actually have to build something out for you. So I figured I would do that as well, give you a real uh, a, a focused application or a fo focused experience uh, to look at. So first of all, I'm going to follow one of my own um, workflows and start out by creating some empty real estate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project on this server, and I'm going to call it the, the intro webinar project. And notice, uh, I don't really have time to explain everything, but uh, the first thing when you create a new piece of real estate or a new project on the server is that Lackey asks you, well, what kind of, what type of project is this? Is this mostly about assay data? Is this mostly about collaborating around generic data? 
Is this about integrating different uh, clinical data in its inside of a research study? Well, I'm just going to take the default, this collaboration type project, because I have, I just want to share data in some generic kind of way. So I'm just going to go forward with the default. Again, a good place to keep in mind that there are no irrevocable decisions in LabKey. I can always go back and change that. Second thing that LabKeys asks me when I, whenever I create a new piece of real estate is, who's it for? And uh, the default is that it's just for me, as it should be. You know, maybe I'm gonna, maybe I'm gonna put up sensitive data up here, and I don't want it to just accidentally be announced to the whole world. I just want to keep it to myself until I'm ready to show what I want to show. So, with this click, I have a generic uh, data sharing project, which is just for me. It also is going to ask me about some settings, but I'm just going to take all the defaults on those. So here is a blank new project in LabKey Server. It doesn't really do anything yet. Um, LabKey does anticipate me a little bit here. These panels, they're called web parts, have their own uh, specialized functionality. This messages panel is about, uh, about uh, building threaded uh, message boards. I, I don't really anticipate using any uh, messaging in this app. I just want to share files with you all. So I'm actually going to just snap this panel off. I'm going to remove it. Um, this panel right here is like a wiki page or a HTML page panel. I'm actually going to use it. This is a place to give context to whatever app you're trying to build out. And so I'm going to create a new HTML page to give you some context. I'm going to name it the file sharing page. And I'm just going to quickly explain what we're doing here. Uh, this is a file sharing portal. See below for available files. Now, uh, notice I don't really have any with any place to put files yet, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually snap on a new panel here called the Files panel. Uh, and this is the window where I can place files for, for my audience. So I'm going to give you, first I'm going to get the files I want to put there. I want to give you this very presentation I just gave. I also, I also want to give you a Lab key server basics uh, presentation, and what else would be good to give you? You know, here is a building apps presentation. This is full of to-dos. It's not done. It's a work in progress. I'm actually going to present it in April in DC if you guys want to come out to DC and be part of that. So I'll give you these three files, let's say. Uh, in LabKey, you just have to drag and drop stuff into this file panel. And now I've got a very simple data portal, but it's just for me. I've got to share it with you all. And to do that, I'm actually going to open up the permissions on this piece of real estate. And what this page is telling me is um, it's inviting me to give out different powers or different roles to different users. Well, I've got you all grouped into one group called the intro webinar group. And what I am doing here is I'm saying give everybody in the intro webinar group editing power over this project. So now you guys should be able to see this and even edit it. You can actually add your own data here, add your own files if you want. And if you want to grab these down and download them for yourself, just double click one of these and it'll be downloaded. Well, I finished just in time. I've got like three minutes left. Um, I think we should open it up for any questions. 
uh, out there? Does anybody have any questions or concerns or anything they want to see? So I don't have any ch questions that have come through chat yet. Um, anyone who does have a question, go ahead and, and put it in chat, or you can raise your hand and I will unmute you, um, and you can ask it in person. All right, looks like we do have one question, okay. um, or a few, Steve, I'm going to ask them. Um, the first one is, after setting up the system for day-to-day -day new data entry, do we have to continue importing from another spreadsheet, or can we use the lab key interface directly to enter new individual data? Yeah, you can, you can do either. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the things about a data grid, let's just find a data grid here. This is just a random data grid is that it, each data grid presents you with a up, is with an update um, view as well for each record. So if I notice there's this little edit button here, if I want to update a particular record, I can do it here. Or if I want to insert a brand new record, I can do it here if I want to just insert one at a time. Or if I just have a whole bunch of new rows of data that I want to throw into this, I can do it here, and I can either point to a new Excel file, I can even copy and paste in data from another, you know, as long as it's formatted with the right column names. So there's lots of options. It's not like the data grid is fixed uh, and you need to redo it each time. It's this. It's it's. Uh, it's just like inside, it's really just inside of a database. You can update to it, you can insert to it. Awesome. Um, we have another question. So can we connect the lab key system with rena relational databases uh, like Postgres for live data interchange? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can just hook up data to all kinds of different databases, uh, Oracle, SAS, Microsoft SQL Server, Postgres, and I bet I'm forgetting one. And here is, um, uh, this page right here is a overview of all of the different schemas that this server's been attached to, or is it currently attached to. Um, it looks like there's about, whatever, about a dozen schemas here. These could potentially be from totally different databases. Um, uh, for instance, you know, one might be from Oracle, one might be from Postgres. Uh, one of the things LabKey does is it provides an abstraction layer for all of that, so that uh, you have a way of speaking to all of those different schema with one SQL dialect. You don't need to know Oracle and Postgres to attach both of those database types to LabKey. You just hook them up. Just, you know, if you know anything about this, all you need to do is put a resource tag in your Tomcat file, in your Tomcat config file, and then actually go, once you've done that, LabKey is ready to go. You'll actually go into schema administration, new external schema, and then right down in this drop-on, you'll see your new the name that you put in that resource tag. So there's only, there's not much of interest here, but you might see a new um, schema listing here, select it, give it a name, and then the data's been sucked into the server and you can work with it from there. Awesome. Um, Follow-up question. Um, does uh, LabVIEW server have calculation between fields? Uh, yeah, it absolutely does. Um, I don't know. It might be the kind of thing. There's a couple. Of, there's lots of ways to do that. Honestly, you can uh, do it in SQL. Oh, so, was there more? Sorry. I was going to say I just got to follow up on that one that uh, yeah. might have more clarity. So during new data entry, um, they would want to display some calculated values based on new values entered at the time of data entry. Yeah, I can think of a couple of ways to do that. Um, you could do it with calculated columns inside of SQL. Um, if that is a little bit that you know that there's something kind of that can be a little stiff at times. 
another way to do it would be with with an R type style view on top of the data. Um, and there may even be some other ways to do it. Um, but those are the first two that, that come to mind. Great. All right, do we have any additional questions? OK, I think it looks like that about wraps it up. OK. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know what else I'm going to do here is I'm going to snap back onto this, this little app that we're all part of now. I'm going to snap on the messages board here, so please, if you have any questions that just came to you after this is over, just throw a message up here and I'll, and I'll monitor that. Or otherwise, go to the support boards. They're, they're, they're very active. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I will send this recording around. Thanks, folks.